church in the next few years. We're going to live a journey that we've never thought possible as God moves in a mighty way in West Conroe. This message is going to begin a series of four messages every Sunday in October. And this very well may be the most important series that I share with you in the next five years. We're going to be talking about in this series who we are as a church. We're going to be talking about where we've been as a church. We're going to be talking about what makes this church different from church down the street or the church on the other side of the city. We're going to be talking about where we believe God wants us to go in the next five to ten years. Now, I say that because I want to, I want to make a comment. Some of you have heard that Diane and I recently moved, and that's true. Uh, In fact, we moved in the middle of my recovery. It almost killed Diana. It was unpack a box and drag Jay. Unpack a box and drag Jay. Uh, But we did. And some of you heard that and you said, oh no, he's fixing to leave. He's fixing to retire. Some of you looked at that and you said, He's fixing to retire, and you got really excited about that. (laughs) Well, both of you are wrong. So we moved to Elkins Lake, which is on the south side of Huntsville. It's a 25-minute drive from my driveway to this parking lot. And I can beat some of you who live in Walden or Bentwater uh, here. And so we have, we have family that live there in that subdivision, and we loved the amenities and the kind of country feel uh, of being there, and so that's why we moved, and no other reason. So I just want to put that to rest, that there's no transitions about to take place around here for a, for a good while. But I am excited. Isn't that amazing? Preachers live in a glass house, brother, and you can't spit to the right or the left without somebody seeing it and wondering what's going on. So I just want to put that to rest. But but I am so excited about this. Our staff has been working for a long time. We have spent hours analyzing our community, our church, where we've been, the ministries that we've done, and, and where our community's going. We live in a dynamic community. We don't live in a little stable t- town. We live in a city that is vigorously growing and vigorously changing. And church, we want to be fruitful. We want to be impactful in this city in the years to come. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. I'm excited about it. I hope you get excited about it. In your worship guide this morning, I included a little insert, a little story. If you didn't get that, there's some more out there. I want you to get it. Um, And this kind of summarizes, I don't want you to read it right now. I want you to listen to me, but this kind of summarizes this series, okay? And it, and it maybe will give you a little bit clearer picture of what we're talking about. But you see the phrase up on the, up on the screen, live the journey. You're going to see that phrase a whole lot because it's going to be the crux of our motivation to encourage people to connect to God's greater journey for their life. We're going to encourage this city to live the journey God has for them. 
Well, let's read this passage in 1 Peter. If you would stand in honor of God's Word. And uh, I want to thank all of our staff and Dr. Yancey that's preached in my absence. They, they, every one of them did a great job. I watched every service except one. Uh, Chris preached a couple of weeks ago. We were in the new house. We didn't have Wi-Fi. And I, my, my iPad just kept buffering, and so I couldn't see it. But uh, uh, they did a great job, and I appreciate them so much. And, and uh, Chris and Dr. Yancey really teed up this message that I'm going to preach here for you this morning. So Peter writes to these believers who have been dispersed from Jerusalem, and he says, And coming to him, that's to Jesus, as to a living stone, rejected by men, but choice and precious in the sight of God, you also, as living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. He's talking to you. He's talking about you. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For this is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion a choice stone, a precious cornerstone, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. This precious value then is for you who believe. Every one of you standing in here this morning who have placed your faith in Jesus Christ, this value of Christ as the chief cornerstone is for you. But for those who disbelieve the stone which the builders rejected, this became the very cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. For they stumble because they are disobedient to the word. And to this doom they also were appointed. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Live the journey. God bless his word. Thank you. Please be seated. So this morning, I want you to use your imagination because we're going to take a trip on a magic bus. And you can name this bus WCBC Magical Bus. And there it is on the screen. You can see there's already some people on board. And uh, we're going to take a trip to various places this morning on this magical bus. But every one of these places have one thing in common. That is that they are all living stones. Now, as I said a couple of weeks ago, Chris shared a message with you out of the book of Joshua where the children of Israel were on the eastern bank of the Jordan River, and they were about ready to cross over into the promised land. Joshua was going to lead them across. And as they crossed, Joshua did something. He told the priests to take a stone, 12 stones, one for every tribe, out of the riverbed of the Jordan River. And they got on the western bank, the promised land side of the Jordan River. And he said, now I want you to build a heap of stones a memorial, so that in days to come, after I'm gone and after you're gone, and our children and our grandchildren come back to this place, and they say, what do these stones mean? We're going to be able to tell them. They're going to be those, we're going to pass this story down, that God brought his people out of slavery and brought them in to the promised land right here at this spot. Living stones have real purpose. 
One thing that they do is they remind us of the past. And it's absolutely critical, church, that we remember from whence we came. West Conroe was not always like this. There was a beginning. And it reminds us that God did something in that place. But the second thing living stones do is that they teach us what God wants us to do in the future. So as Peter's writing these believers here in in 1 Peter chapter 2, and he calls them living stones, he's thinking back. He's referring back to those Old Testament memorials that were built, the one that was built there on the Jordan River, the one that Jacob built at at, uh, Bethel, When God changed his name to Israel, he built a memorial of living stones. And Peter says, if you are in Christ today, you are a living stone. So let's get on this bus. Let's start it up. Let's get moving to our first destination. And our first destination is West Conroe's beginnings. Some of you that have been around here a long time know some of these facts, but some of you do not. But I want you to first understand this. West Conroe was not born out of strife. It was not born out of division. We were birthed out of First Baptist Church in Conroe. It was not because of a split. It was because of the faith of a church and the vision of a church that believed God wanted them to plant another church in an undeveloped part of Conroe. There was a burden and a belief that this was God's will for them. And I look back at that time, 35, 37 years ago, and I think, what faith? in a church that wasn't as strong as it is now to say God wants us to do this. God God has a job for us. So on May 16th in 1983, the first service of West Conroe Mission took place in an office building over on West Davis Street. And there was a pounding thunderstorm that, there that day. What a worse day to begin a brand new church plant. Weather, lightning, thunder, rain, it was flooding. But there were 51 people that showed up. 51 people at the very first service. About six months later or a year later in April of 1984, they called their first pastor. There's only been two in this church. Reverend Sid Woodruff was that first pastor of West Conroe, and he came to West Conroe even before West Conroe was an autonomous church. He came while it was still the West Conroe mission, and that that meant that the church was still dependent on support from First Baptist Church and from our local association and from our state convention uh, just simply to be able to pay the bills and to do the things that they needed to do. But on June 2nd, 1985, another year later, we've moved two years down the road now from the first service of 51 people. On June 2nd, 1985, 35 years ago, West Conroe Mission became West Conroe Baptist Church. No longer supported by First Baptist Church. No longer supported by Tryon Evergreen Baptist Association. No longer supported by their state convention. It was an autonomous church. And on that day, 202 members joined West Conroe Baptist Church. And then, a couple of years later, in September of 1987, 
West Conroe Baptist Church moved its campus from that office building to six acres on this location. Six acres on the northernmost part where the driveway is by the chapel and the office building sat. They built those two buildings and they moved to 1855 Longmire Road. Now let's stop the bus for a moment because I want you to walk with me down to the corner of Longmire Road and 336. There's an electronic sign there that's state-of-the-art, but that wasn't there then. And Longmire Road now is a four- or five-lane major road. Loop 336 is a five- or six-lane major thoroughfare that encircles Conroe, but it was not that way in 1987. Longmire Road and 336 were two-lane roads. In fact, Loop 336 wasn't even completed on the other side of 105. It turned into a dirt road. They moved to a pioneer area. You go down right now to this corner, we walk down there and we look around and what do you see? You see you see businesses everywhere. There's the Commonwealth Building right across the street over here. There's a bank over on that side and, a, and a, uh, I think it's called Primrose Academy or something. There's a grocery store, cat a corner from that corner, but none of that was there. It were trees. There were woods. The church moved out into the woods, but they moved believing God was going to do something. They moved believing that this underdeveloped area of Conroe was going to be a place God was going to do a work. That year that they moved their campus here, the population of Conroe was 25,000 people. We laugh at that now. When we look, and I'll tell you in just a moment what the population of of Conroe is right here. But I want you to get a feeling of a sense of a, a group of people, a much smaller group of people that believed God was going to do something in the years ahead. And they placed their energy, they placed their work, they placed their resources in that vision to see that accomplished. All right, let's get back on the bus. And let's go to the, our next destination, and that's West Conroe's present, where we are right now. It looks much different. Number one, we no longer have a six-acre camper. We have a campus. We have a 20-acre campus. We don't have two buildings. We have, I don't know how many buildings. 10, 12, 14 buildings on this campus. We had a a pre-pandemic attendance of 900 to 1,000 people in worship every Sunday. We have life groups that are almost as big as the original group when it constituted as church. This church is a leader You are a leader in mission support and in mission strategy. I don't say that to toot my horn because I'm not the one that does this. You do it. But I want you to understand you are a leader. This church leads our association in mission giving to the association. This church is in the top 10 churches in the state of Texas, Southern Baptist churches in the state of Texas in mission giving. This church is in the top 250 Southern Baptist churches in the nation of over 40, some 43,000 Southern Baptist churches. This church is in the top 250 churches in mission support. We now have mission work across the country, a church plant 
in Utah. We are engaging an unreached people group in another country. We are leaders in mission work. And I want you to know, church, you may not know this, but you are recognized as a church that reaches out to minister to people in this community. I have heard, I have heard other pastors make the comment about what West Conroe does to touch the city of Conroe. Our mission has grown and we are ministering now to a city that has dramatically changed since 1985. The population has changed from 25,000 to over 93,000 people in Conroe proper. We live in a city that is much more culturally and racially diverse. We live in a city that is much financially better off, wealthier than it was in 1985. But we also live in a city that has grown in spiritual apathy and in lostness. Get off the bus for a minute. Let's walk back down to the corner down here. Uh, Now you see the electric sign, right? Yeah, it's there. That big pond out there makes me want to go fishing. I still believe there's catfish in that pond. But what do you see? You see office building, a major office building. You see other businesses everywhere. Now you see major lanes of of thoroughfare on Longmire and on 336. You see traffic that is constant, and it's sometimes frustratingly constant. Cars that are that are rushing by there. But I want, I want you to stop for a minute. You see those cars going by out there on 336, those cars coming down Longmire? I don't want you to just look at the car. I want you to look at the people inside the car. Oh, there's my next door neighbor. Oh, I know that guy. He's, he's in my... 10th grade algebra class. Oh, that's the lady that works in the building where I work. Oh, that's the man across the street from us. They're our neighbors. They're our friends. They're our workmates. They're our schoolmates. And do you know, based on the average of our county, Less than two of every 20 of those cars have any connection to Christ or his church. Over 18 out of every 20 cars that pass by this campus have any connection to Christ or his church. That's where we are right now. We have a job to do. And that brings us to our third destination. So hop back on the bus. Let's go. And we get to our third destination, and it's West Conroe's future. And I'm going to put a phrase up on the screen here that we're going to learn together. Because we're going to change our mission statement. We've had a mission statement for years that said we exist to lead people to be fully devoted followers of Christ. And that's, that's a good mission statement, but it's a generic mission, mission statement. Every church ought to be leading people to be fully devoted followers of Christ. Nothing unique about that. But there, is, there are many 
characteristics of West Conroe that are unique that we're going to discover over the next three weeks. And so our mission statement going forward is going to be connecting all generations to God's greater journey. This is our guiding star, our North Star for a good many years ahead. And you'll see why. You'll see why this fits us and it fits us uniquely. We have not completed our mission, church. We're not done. Not by a long shot. In fact, we've got more to do now than West Conroe had to do 35 years ago. We have got a huge mission in front of us. We have a, this church has a unique personality and God has placed us in a unique location and setting to see him move in mighty ways. I came here as your pastor in May of 1998 and when actually I drove through the parking lot before that time, several months before that time, because I heard about West Conroe and I heard they may be, or they were talking to me about coming here as pastor. And I thought, well, it'd be a good thing to see the place. And as I rode through that parking lot out there, we didn't have the hilltop parking lot. We didn't have the parking lot out here. We just had that parking lot right up there. When I drove through it, Diana was with me. Diana said, as we drove through that parking lot, I feel like I'm home. But as I drove through that parking lot, I thought, God, you have placed a church in a strategic place. And for my 22 years as your pastor, I have continued to ask myself this question. Why? Why, God, did you place this church in this location, the epicenter of growth in North Montgomery County? What do you want us to do? What do you want to accomplish through us? Our future, just like our past and just like our present, is a living stone. And God wants to use us to build up a spiritual house. I mean, we just finished building a beautiful children's building, but that's not our purpose. Our purpose is to build up a spiritual house. And I want you to see that house again, your neighbors that are in those cars driving by the children that are in those cars. I look at that, that children's building and I I see our children. I see your grandchildren. I see the children that are to come and they're going to learn about Christ in that building. They're going to worship Christ in that building. Many are going to give their lives to Christ in that building. I see those student buildings up there, and I think about our teenagers, our students, and they're going to learn how much God loves them, and some of them are going to give their lives to Christ in those buildings. They already have. Some of them are going to surrender to full-time vocational service, maybe to be an international missionary, maybe to be a pastor, maybe to be a worship leader, maybe to be another student minister. That's what these buildings are for, to build up a spiritual house and offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So, as we see that growth happened. One of the things that I believe God wants us to be involved in as well is to seeing more churches planted. There, because of the the growth of this community, there are increasing numbers of areas where the population 
calls for another church start. We see the lostness of the nations, and you just heard Bethany talk about the lostness of her area, but the openness of the people to give their hearts to Christ. I believe God's going to call us to increased involvement in that. Let's wrap this trip up with our final destination, and that final destination is your heart. When you walked in a while ago, I hope you were given one of these rocks. If you did, pull it out. If you didn't get one, I want you to get one on your way out. Now, some of you think these are just little glass marbles. These are actually uncut diamonds. But it's the closest thing to a rock that I could get. I want you to, I want you to keep this for a while. You're probably going to lose it. I probably am too. But I want you to keep it in your pocket or keep it in your purse. And I want you to pull this rock out every once in a while. I want you to look at it. And I want this living stone to remind you that you are a living stone. If you are in Christ Jesus... You are a living stone. And so because of that, I want to ask you this morning, what will you do? What will you do? Will will you get on this bus? Will you walk down to the corner to greet your neighbor, build a relationship with your neighbor and say, by the way, When you go to church, where do you go? I'd love to have you come with me to West Conroe. Some may say, I I can't do that. Sure you can. You're a living stone. Christ lives in you. It's not hard to build a friendship, to meet a neighbor. I've already met two new neighbors there in Elkins Lake. And they're my neighbors, and I'm going to talk to them about Christ, just like I talked to my neighbors when we lived at our last house here in Conroe. Maybe God wants you to serve in some way. And I especially want to talk to our young adults. I want want to ask you, I want to encourage you to start stepping up to the plate and becoming leaders. Some of us are getting to be old geezers. And I want want our gifted young men and women to step up and be take over leadership positions in our church. If this stone represents you, that means God has done something eternally in your heart. He changed you. He came to live in you. And you became a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession. Will you get on the bus with us? Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, I'm not sure I I know Christ. I want to tell you today you can. Today you can come to know him. You can become, as Peter said, one of these living stones. And there may be some of you here today that God is calling to become a part of West Conroe. You know Christ, but you don't have a church family. And you say, I believe I want to be a part of a church that has a vision for years ahead to make a difference and an impact for God in their community and the world. We invite you to come join. There's a couple of ways you can do it. It's already been referred to. You can can scan that QR code that is in your bulletin or on the screen. Or you can come by and meet one of the staff right after the service. We'll be out there in the next steps uh, area. I'll be right on the other side. If you're a guest, I'd love for you to come by and I want to meet you and get to know you a little bit. But if you say, you know, Pastor, yeah, I want to join this church. 
Come by and tell one of us. And we'll help you begin that process today. Church, in the next few years, we're going to live a journey that we've never thought possible. As God moves in a mighty way in West Conroe.